Good morning, again, planet Earth. The reason I say again is because I uploaded a video earlier today that had no audio. Now, in the future, if you watch one of my videos and it does not have audio, please, I would recommend that, you know, leave a comment that says no audio. In the video that I uploaded earlier tonight, one person did indeed do this. But before that happened, I believe 19 other people viewed the video, and, like, two of you liked the video. Why would you like a video that has no audio? I'm not that good looking. Really. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I usually check my videos once in a while, I don't. Those also tend to be the times when there's no audio. Um, so, sorry about that. Uh, anyways, uh, to kind of redo the video I did earlier, uh, today was a good day because I went to Shaw's and I got eggnog. That's right, they had eggnog. Not half gallons yet, but quarts. And, you know, the quarts come first and then come half gallon. So I just got two quarts because that equaled a half gallon. See, I know my math. Um, I would, I showed you actually in the last video the cup of eggnog, but then I drank it. So apologies. And as it's four in the morning, I'm not particularly keen to consume another one. Um, but that's not the only great aspect of my shopping trip that took place today. Uh, Shaw's also had a deal. Normally, well, first, first, let me uh, fill you in on the key component of uh, Ra the Ryan diet. Now, for those of you who've watched my videos from the beginning, you've witnessed the evolution of uh, my incredible diet, I'm going from eating only Subway every single day, freshman year, sophomore year, and the first half of my junior year, I think. It was, yes, in the first half of my junior year. Um, and now I, I cook every single night. Uh, but my drink of choice uh, that goes with my food is V8 Fusion, peach mango flavored. V8 Fusion, for those of you who don't know, is uh, has a full serving of both fruit and vegetables, um, but tastes like fruit juice, and it's really yummy. Um, so I, I like peach mango because I think it tastes the best and is the closest, uh, or it, it tastes like really good, good juice. So I recommend that if you're, you know, at the supermarket looking for something to drink. Um, so I, I usually buy two a week and it's never really enough. Uh, I, I would probably drink three, maybe even four a week, but probably three a week of, I think it's, um, let's see, it is 46 fluid ounces. Um, yep. And so Shaw's had a deal, and they were selling, these are normally $4.19, which is a, an incredible ripoff. Uh, everything that the Shaw's sells near MIT is a ripoff, uh, presumably because they have a monopoly on the market. And this is why monopolies are bad, and we have antitrust laws. Um, but you see, in MIT, near MIT, we have Shaw's, and we have, like, Laverdi's, which is the campus store, campus little grocery store, we have Macon downstairs, which is a little convenience store, um, but the only real grocery store is Shaw's. So they can jack up their prices, and we can't really do anything about it. So I, I'm sure $4.19 for this V8 is, is outrageous, uh, but nevertheless, I purchased it. But they had half off, or $2 off, I should say. It's normally four nineteen. it was two nineteen. Uh, and let me tell you, I was excited because you don't have to refrigerate a V8. You can just let it sit until you know you, you want it to be cold. Uh, so this past weekend when I went, I picked up as much as I could bring back. I was carrying a bunch of other groceries too, uh, which ended up being six uh, things of V8. I went back tonight to get my eggnog, and I checked, and they still had the deal. And the deal only lasts until tomorrow, the 18th. So I knew I had to seize what was very possibly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And I purchased Shaw's 
entire stock of peach mango V8. And now I am in my room with nine V8s on my floor uh, and six more, uh, or no, I think I drank three, so like three more in the fridge or something. Um, so I am stocked up for what should be five to seven weeks, uh, which is great, I'm probably saving a lot of money. Actually, I am. I looked at my receipt and I saved $20, spent 25 That's how it's done, let me tell you. Uh, so academically speaking, um, not a whole lot on my plate right now. Tomorrow, uh, I am going to be doing reading for 512, uh, which is or orgo, organic chemistry. Um, I have an exam next Wednesday. And if that sounds strange, because I had a 512 exam two weeks ago, it is. This class has four exams in it. So I have an exam next week, and then I have an exam four weeks after that, and then I have an exam uh, four weeks after that. So, yeah, lots of, lots of 512 exams. Uh, but that's cool. Um, and no 18440 piece at this week, so that's good. I can focus on the 512. Uh, that's because we had just had an exam this past Monday or whatever. Uh, and I have a paper due for my STS level 3, Rise of Modern Science. I have a paper due next week. So, no, two weeks. So I have to write that at some point. And I also have like papers due for my education class at some point. Uh, well, actually, two weeks. So same as, no, next week. Yeah, education class next week. Uh, Rise Modern Science week after that. Um, and on another exciting note, uh, Splash, which I teach at every single year, um, is November 17th uh, and 18th. Um, and I encourage anyone who can go to go. Um, if you don't know what Splash is, Google MIT Splash, and it will give you a pretty good idea. But to give you a super condensed summary, basically you can come here and take classes on a wide variety of subjects offered by MIT students like me. So I say, hey, I really like special relativity. I'm going to teach a class on it. And it's fun. Um, and it's a two-day thing. Uh, tons of classes, like very academic and serious classes, um, but also classes like how to survive the zombie apocalypse, which are perhaps a little less serious. But if you know there is a zombie apocalypse, you guys are going to be the ones prepared. So good. Um, interesting thing here is that uh, for the last three years I've been here, I teach about Splash and Spark, which is the same thing, but for one day in the spring. And I, I always teach countless sections of special relativity. I, I teach anywhere from five to eleven or twelve sections of special relativity. Uh, this year I'm switching it up. I'm teaching five sections of special relativity, but that is not all I'm teaching. Uh, I'm also going to be teaching... Uh, so Introduction to Special Relativity. Uh, on Saturday will be Intro to Special Relativity, The Physics of Waves, Expanding the Binomial Theorem, Why We Need Quantum Mechanics, uh, and on Sunday I'll be teaching Introduction to Special Relativity, Why We Need Quantum Mechanics, uh, and The Physics of Climate Change. To kind of summarize what these classes are, uh, Introduction to Special Relativity um, is actually the most self-explanatory. Uh, it's uh, an introduction to the major effects of special relativity, length contraction, time dilation, um, rel relativity of simultaneity, uh, physics of waves. Uh, I derive um, the speed of light, which is kind of cool. Um, and I talk about Maxwell's equations and mechanical waves and things like that. Uh, why we need quantum mechanics is why we need quantum mechanics, because it turns out we'd all be dead if it didn't exist. Uh, and I'll give two, um, one or two important examples of that. Uh, I'll give you a hint what one of them is. You thought electrons orbited the nucleus? Do they really? Uh, and expanding the binomial theorem. Uh, binomial theorem tells you what to do if you have a polynomial with two terms raised to the nth power. How do you expand it? Uh, I, had, in high school, expanded this theory to, uh, I called it the general theory of polynomial expansions. <laughs> I'm a nerd, but not actually. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cool, you know, you can tell from these videos. But uh, I, I basically um, 
derived multinomial theorem, which says if you have a polynomial with any number of terms raised to the nth power, how do you expand that? Uh, and you use multidimensional variants of Pascal's triangle. Oh, I shouldn't tell you that in case you take the class. But so you find out how to do that, and it's really cool. Um, and you can kind of yeah, it's fun. Uh, and then my last class is the physics of climate change, where uh, from pretty basic premises of physics, uh, we derive data of the IPCC, International Panel on Climate Change, uh, and, and get their numbers for you know uh, projected uh, heat gains, uh, or heat increases, temperature increases on the planet, uh, and things like that. Um, and it's done using relatively straightforward thermodynamics. So um, it's a nice introduction to the, the topic, which is a particularly salient topic, topic um, politically uh, and scientifically. And uh, certainly having some kind of science knowledge about why what is happening is happening would be useful. Um, so I've talked for 11 minutes, but surprisingly this video has actually been dense uh, in that the ratio of time spent talking to things said is, is close to one, which is nice. Um, and that's all for now. Uh, remember to comment, which is somewhere like here, I think. Uh, like, which is also somewhere here. Subscribe, which I think is up somewhere. Um, and if this video doesn't have audio, don't like the video. Tell me. <laughs> Thank you.